Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer. I'm so glad you're here because today I have a wonderful guest artist. B.B. Cameron has been one of my favorite crafters for quite some time. She always does creative designs, and recently she came out with her own line of products from Spellbinders called B.B.'s Hummingbirds. Well, she is here today to share with you a really cool trellis card front design. Then she's going to show you some of her cool new products, and then she's going to show you how to make colorful inked die cuts. She has lots to share, and I really hope that it leaves you feeling inspired as it did for me. The trellis card design that she shares can be done with basic card supplies, and then the inking of die cuts that she shares at the end is great for any die cut shape. Let's go ahead and get started. Hello from Scotland. This is Bibi Cameron, and I'm grateful and happy to be able to share card making ideas with you in this space designed by Jennifer Maguire. Thank you very much, Jennifer, and thank you all for having me today. So the idea is to have fun and to enhance your creativity by making DIY card bases. These are all made out of 300 grams cardstock and you don't need any special die to do this. I'm also going to share with you a preview of my latest release for Spellbinders called Bibi's Hummingbirds. And that's what you see all those cute hummingbirds and sentiments on the front panels of these cards. I hope you like these ideas and that you can understand everything I say. English is not my first language. I'm a Spanish speaker, so I try my best. Okay, the first card idea I want to share with you is this one here, and I have called it Criss Cross. And to make this or any of the cards in this video, I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz Maxi and the Mini Guillotines or Mini Trimmer. One is good to cut large pieces of paper and the other one is good to cut small pieces. I'm going to use here the maxi guillotine to cut an A4 sheet of cardstock, just at seven inches like so. And then I'm going to rotate the paper just to cut two five by seven inches panels that I'm going to need for the first card design. So there you go. I have my two panels that measures five by seven inches. And I also have these long pieces of paper that I'm also needing for the first project. This long piece is going to be cut every half inch and pay attention because to cut a perfectly straight cut, I'm going to align the paper with the grid in the base of the guillotine. And when the paper is too narrow, you can align the edge of the paper with an engraved or embedded line that is in that plastic part of the guillotine to cut a half inch paper strip just like that. This seems more difficult to explain than to do and because we need three extra paper strips for this card, we are just going to do that out of another sheet of cardstock. Okay, I'm going to start placing these paper strips on the panel like so and in diagonal. Just pay attention how I'm doing it and then I'm going to hold this with a clear block because the paper tends to move. And I'm using here very low tack tape by Simon's stamp to hold the paper in place while I score this like so. And then I'm going to use adhesive to be able to fold this over and stick it in place, just like that. And then you can trim any excess of cardstock that is showing in the front of the car and we are going to remove the tape that doesn't cause any damage to the paper. And I'm going to align the other paper strips like so. Then I'm going to place a clear block on top. I'm going to use the same piece of tape to hold this in place while I score this. And then I fold and adhere these pieces here at the top, just in place. If there is anything to trim, then I just trim it like so. And then I remove the low tack tape to be able to adhere these paper strips in place. So this here requires a little bit of attention because the paper is going to move and you don't want your, your panel to be crooked. So my advice is to pay attention where the paper is lining up 
and hold it down to keep it in place. So there you go. We just need to trim the excess paper at the bottom of this panel. This is all the waste we are going to get from this. And here we have two options. We can adhere this on a top fold 5 by 7 inches card base, but I prefer to add a 5 by 7 inches panel at the back. I just make sure that all the edges are aligned and depending on the toppers you want to add to this card base, you can do this in a horizontal or vertical format. I love the vertical idea, so that's what I did. And of course, you can make these in different sizes and you can use die cuts or stamped images. The hummingbirds, small sentiments or small florals are perfect for this. And that's the first card idea today. And for the second card, we are going to use a top folding C6 card base. And I'm going to use this metallic part of the mini trimmer that measures exactly half inch. And I'm going to cut the paper at least six or seven times in the exact same way until we have cut the vast majority of the front panel. But I'm leaving a two inches piece of cardstock at the top. And then I'm going to use some of these paper strips that I just cut to create a new design for this front panel. I have called this design trellis. And to finish it, we are going to apply little dots of glue like so. And then we are going to adhere over this one of the paper strips we just cut out of that panel as well. Then we are going to repeat the same process in the other side of this panel to give shape to the trellis and we trim any excess of cardstock using that mini trimmer as well. You can create these projects in any size or any color. I have a sample here for you and here are the cards finished using Vivi's Hummingbirds. And in case you were wondering, in the second part of this video, I'm going to show you how to add color to the die cuts. So we are going here for the third card design and the last card design in this video that is a variation of the one we just saw. But for this one, we are going to cut the front panel of that C6 top fold card base every one inch. We are also going to trim down a quarter of an inch from the card base like so. And then we are going to place these wider paper strips over that card base like so, making sure that some of them are off the page in the right side and others are off the page in the left side. And to keep everything together, I'm going to use the quarter paper strip that I cut from the card base. Then you are going to need another strip of paper that measures a quarter of an inch as well to glue the other side of this card. And I have called this design sign slates because that's the name of a wooden ornament I saw in a craft store and I was inspired by that. I'm just giggling because this was the prototype and I actually think that it turns out quite well. This kind of car bases will allow you to stamp bigger sentiments and also to lay down elements in a different way. Now let me show you the Spellbinders Bibi's Hummingbird collection. This is a collection that includes four large die sets. One of the die sets includes an oversized set hummingbird. It measures five by seven inches. We also have here a five by seven intricate detailed background die set with layering elements, a scene building elements like this die set here that includes a cloud border die, a butterfly, a dragonfly, a hummingbird and a lily, and also a pop-up hummingbird die set that also includes a pop-up flower. And to complete this collection, we also have two stamp sets. One that is this one here called Hummingbird Build I Scene and includes also coordinating dies and hummingbird sentiments stamp set that include 14 different sentiments for different occasions. So this card features the hummingbird and lily elements, are the hummingbird, the lilies, and also the butterfly and the dragonfly. And the sentiment is from hummingbird sentiments stamp set, this one here. This card features one of the hummingbirds from the delicate floral hummingbird die set that is massive. 
the small floral die cuts are from this die set called Hummingbird Card Creator and this dragonfly is from the Hummingbird and Lily die set. This card again features elements from the delicate floral Hummingbird die set and the sentiment is also from the Hummingbird's Sentiments stamp set. And this card is a very small sample of the things you can make with the Hummingbird Villa Scene stamp set and coordinating dies. I added a hot foil sentiment, just wanted to show you something very quick. And for this card, I also use the Hummingbirds from the Delicate Floral Hummingbird die set. And the small flowers are for the Hummingbird card creator. And the sentiment again is from Hummingbird Sentiments stamp set. So in this collection, we only have sentiments in this stamp set, but you can use any stamp set, glimmer plate, or dice that you might have to go with the hummingbirds. Size-wise, let me show you something. So you have there the hummingbird card creator hummingbird, and here is one made with the delicate floral hummingbirds die set. I wanted to provide hummingbirds in different sizes that fit different crafting needs. And you can mix up all these hummingbirds in one single project if you want. They have also interchangeable elements and they fit together, even if the size is slightly larger or shorter. The hummingbird card creator will allow you to create shaped cards, side fold, top fold, or partially die cut your card base in different ways. This is just one sample here. You can also use the large hummingbird just as a topper for your cards or your projects, boxes, mixed media, or even sewing projects. And again, the small hummingbirds from Delicate Floral Hummingbirds die set can be used on a variety of projects using other supplies you might have. This die set will cut a background panel, an intricate panel, an inlay die cut image into a five by seven inches card base. You can also cut the border of that image if you want to. You can do a side fold see-through card or a top fold card. And you have all the layering elements to decorate that background, but you can use it without them as well. Then we have the pop-up hummingbird die set that includes four dies to cut a hummingbird that will pop up out of the page. And the set also includes five dies that will cut a pop-up flower. And this die here that will cut the slits to cut the car base and to be able to set the pop-ups in place. You can also cut in half the pop-up hummingbird and you will have hummingbirds facing different directions. When we were designing this collection, we soon realized that this was all about details. As a crafter, I really love details and I think the details are everything that makes our projects special. But as a crafter, I also want to do some magic. I want to do the less and get the most. To achieve the goal of having many details in fewer pieces, we put in five dies two hummingbirds, for example. So one of them has five pieces and the other one six. And we want those pieces to be loose so you can glue them in different ways to achieve different results. I don't want to overwhelm you, so I'm going to just add color to one hummingbird and a few flowers. I'm going to be using these inks by Simon Says Stamp. I'm using different blending brushes. The smaller the area I want to color, the smaller the brush. The larger the area, the larger the brush. You also need to try to leave white spaces in the die cuts or lighter areas and try not to cover everything with a single color so you can achieve that color degradation and that interest. And if you see here for this flower, I'm just adding a hint of ink at the base of the die cut and at the center, this is a darker ink. And then I apply a lighter pinky or reddish ink over it to blend that. I'm not paying attention. If I have stains of ink here and there, it really doesn't matter. These are the brushes I use daily to ink my die cuts. I really enjoy doing that. And I love the brushes because they are the same colors of the ink I use. And that doesn't allow me to get confused when I'm using the brushes. And I'm going to use now a darker green ink here at the base 
of the winds and the hummingbird tail just like that and I'm also going to add that green ink at the back of the hummingbird I'm trying to just apply at the edge there just like so and I'm also going to add that in the flower base then I'm going to use a lighter green ink and I'm going to blend that just like I did with the red ink you know darker ink and then a lighter ink and then an even lighter ink just to brighten everything up and yellow is a really good ink to do this so I'm going to add that yellow ink over all my die cuts and that's the way I color all the die cuts for the cards you see in this video I'm speeding up this twice the real time that means that if you see 30 seconds it took me one minute to do this and I think this is incredible quick satisfying and relaxing once you finish adding these first layers of colors to the die cuts you can put them together and as you see there I just need four main pieces to put that hummingbird together I can add the wings in different weights as well and I'm trying to show you those possibilities in this video that is short for the size of the collection and all the die cutting possibilities you have the hummingbirds and the small flowers has been designed to be layered over this panel here but when we use them individually we have the chance to do different things and regardless the way you want to use this to put them together is very easy and quick and the lily has three parts one part that has three petals and that's the background piece in which we are going to layer this one that has four petals and we have a single petal that we are going to glue by adding a little bit of glue in the center of that area there just like that and to finish this I'm going to use brown ink all over the edges of these images I'm using small brushes depending the area I use a medium sized brush or a detailed brush and I think that adding this brown ink really adds character to the die cuts and once we have done this we can complete the lily by adding this die cut there and something I'm loving is to splatter gold watercolor paint over my die cuts this also a shimmer and texture and as I told you I'm all about the details this is something I really love to do and people ask me how do you do this well that's the way I do it you know I put attention to details I spend time doing stuff so for the tiny tiny mini flowers I wasn't going to color die cut by die cut because it will take me forever so I just inked some pieces of cardstock using the same inks I was using for the other die cuts I spray water to distress the ink and I also splattered gold paint and as you see there putting this together was really quick also using this new tool by Simon's stamp that is also listed in the video description so I'm also sharing part of the process to make all the little parts that I use for the cards today it took me about one hour and I use all these die cuts that you see on my table then I have to make the card bases and that took about 30-40 minutes because I'm very slow crafter trust me and then to put all together stamp and layer all these compositions took me about two hours <laughs> it's incredible that it took me so long to think how I was going to glue things in place because that's the reality of this hobby so that's all for today thank you very much Jennifer and all of you for having me today I hope you like this video and I hope you love my hummingbird collection and the ideas thank you very much for watching and happy crafting bye Thank you so much, BB. I love your cards, as always. If you want more information about the supplies she used, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. I also have links to all of BB's content so you can learn more from her. I will be back with a video using some of the same products and more very soon. So until then, have a wonderful week.